All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Action and reaction are equal to each other. Ella Wheeler Wilcox expressed the above law of mind as follows. Give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. Give love, and love to your heart will flow, as strength in your utmost need. Have faith, and a score of hearts will show their faith in your word and deed. For life is the mirror of king and the beggar. Tis just what you are and do. Then give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. To adjust is to fit, adapt, accommodate, regulate, to put in working order. In order to adjust to life, it is necessary that you become a channel through which the life principle flows freely, harmoniously, joyously, and lovingly. The solution to all your problems is to get acquainted with and use the divine presence and power in your life. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace, and good shall come unto thee. I suggest that each person establish a definite method of working, and that he practice it regularly and systematically every day. For example, determine for yourself what is the most troublesome problem you have. Decide to solve this problem now by realizing that infinite intelligence within you knows the way out. Its nature is to respond to you. It knows only the answer, and the nature of infinite intelligence is responsiveness. That is, your answer is as certain as the rising of the moon tonight. One young man in our audience had experienced a poverty complex for many years and had received no answers to his prayers. He had prayed for prosperity, but the fear of poverty continuously weighed on his mind. Naturally, he attracted more lack and limitation. Your subconscious mind accepts the dominant of two ideas. This is a law. After talking with him, he learned to pray as follows. I know there is only one source, the life principle from which all things flow. It created the universe and all things therein contained. I am a focal point of the divine presence. My mind is open and receptive. I am a free-flowing channel for harmony, beauty, guidance, wealth, and the riches of the infinite. I know that wealth, health, prosperity, and success are released from within and appear on the without. I am now in harmony with the infinite supply. And just as I would adjust an instrument in my laboratory, I am now mentally adjusting my focused attention on the eternal source of all blessings. I wish for everyone all the blessings of life. I am open and receptive to God's riches, spiritual, mental, and material, and they flow to me in avalanches of abundance. This young man changed his attitude of mind and focused on divine riches rather than poverty, and made it a special point not to deny what he affirmed. In a month's time, his whole life was transformed. He affirmed the above truths morning and evening for about 10 minutes, knowing that he was actually writing down these truths in his subconscious mind, causing the latter to be activated and to release the hidden treasures. Whatever you impress on your subconscious mind is expressed on the screen of space, and your conscious mind is the pen, P-E-N, the thinker, and what you think and feel comes to pass. Aristotle said resistance is the cause of every monstrosity. A monstrosity in the body could be a growth, a tumor, or a lesion, or any other abnormal condition. A woman was resenting and hating her ex-husband. In addition, her physician told her she had developed a serious lesion. She was resisting the free flow of the life principle which flows as harmony, beauty, joy, and love. In other words, the life more abundant. She was blocking the infinite healing presence. She finally realized what she was doing and came to a clear-cut decision to pray as follows. I surrender my husband to the God presence completely. Whenever he comes to my mind, I affirm, God's love fills your mind and heart. 
Then she adjusted her mind to the infinite healing presence and claimed frequently. The infinite healing presence which created me from a cell knows all the processes and functions of my body. It knows how to heal. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And this healing love fills my mind and heart. And I am made whole and perfect. At the end of three weeks, she returned for another examination by her doctor, and the lesion had disappeared. Divine love dissolves everything unlike itself. There are people who resist the weather, new ideas, the headlines of the newspapers, and even their neighbors. There always seems to be friction in their mental and physical relationship. Happy is he who trusted in thee. Adjustment takes place in your own mind. When your thoughts are harmonious, peaceful, loving, and based on eternal verities, in other words, when you get along with yourself, you will be able to get along with others. If your habitual thinking is based on resentment, fear, ill will, hostility, self-condemnation, you will project your hostility and animosity onto others, and you will experience very poor relationship in your business, home, or professional work. Learn to be pliable, flexible, and adjustable. If there is someone in your office who is obstreperous, petulant, and fractious, realize you did not create him. Loose him and let him go mentally. You're not responsible for his warped or twisted mentality, and you should realize he has no power to disturb you. It is always a movement of your own thought which disturbs or annoys you. Marcus Aurelius said 2,000 years ago, if the cucumber is bitter, don't eat it. Very simple, isn't it? Ask yourself, what is my aim in life? Let the answer be peace, harmony, and divine wisdom. Because this is so, identify with your aim and not with the boorishness or surliness of others. Affirm, divine peace and harmony govern me and reign supreme in my life. When you mentally and emotionally identify with your spiritual aim in life, nothing in the external world disturbs you. Stop giving power, prerogatives and privileges to people who have no power. No one disturbs you but yourself. It's a movement of your own thought, your own emotions, your actions and reactions. They all take place in your own mind. Have you ever noticed the way water flows according to the line of least resistance? You may have watched a stream flowing down from the mountain. It never quarrels, fights or resists the rocks, boulders or obstacles in its way. The water goes around the boulders or flows over them and eventually finds its way back to the ocean. All the stumps, stones, and trees disappear or wear away, since nothing can seriously impede the flow of the streams back to the ocean. You are a river of life, and your purpose is to meet challenges, difficulties, and problems, and to overcome them not be mentally fighting or quarreling with them, but by meeting them head on while realizing that joy is in overcoming. Say to yourself, the problem is here, but infinite intelligence within me is here also. It knows only the answer. This problem is divinely outmatched. I will grapple with this problem courageously and through the wisdom and the power of the infinite, I will overcome. With this attitude, you will become victorious, and you will move onward and upward. An engineer whom I know has a wonderful technique for meeting what he calls so-called insuperable obstacles. His constant prayer is the streams of life, power, wisdom, intelligence, joy, and peace flow through me like a golden river revealing to me everything I need to know and giving me the strength to complete all assignments in divine order. He has made his adjustment with the life principle and he has completed every assignment 
in divine order. Do not try to manipulate or change other people. Permit them to have their political or religious beliefs, their peculiarities, eccentricities, and abnormal abnormalities. Judge not, and where you have no judgment, you experience no suffering. Where there is no opinion, there is no suffering, you know. Where there is no judgment, there is no pain. Establish the right relationship to the life principle by realizing the life principle is always seeking to express itself through you as the life more abundant. If you are angry, hateful, resentful, or are engaging in self-condemnation or self-criticism, your foot is on the hose and the waters of life do not flow through you. These negative emotions get snarled up in your subconscious mind and have negative outlets, such as mental and physical disorders. Become an open channel for the Divine Presence. Realize you're a focal point of the Divine Life, and like an electric bulb, you are here to let your light so shine before men that they see your good works, thereby glorifying and revealing your faith in the infinite intelligence and infinite power and infinite life principle within you. A lonely person has shut out friends from his life. He is not in tune with the infinite and usually is nursing some psychic trauma, saying to himself, I have been hurt before. I will not get friendly with people lest I get hurt again. All this is foolishness. Every person is an epitome of the divine. And when you exalt the divinity in the midst of you and salute the divinity in others, you will automatically radiate friendship, love and goodwill to all people, and you will never lack for friends. You must be a friend to have a friend. Do you think the others in your office should change and make the adjustment? There is no one to change but yourself. When you change, your world magically melts in the image and likeness of your contemplation. If uh, married, you and your spouse should adjust to each other's peculiarities and idiosyncrasies, overlooking each other's shortcomings, but focusing on and exalting the qualities which endear you one to the other. If you are in tune with the infinite and full of goodwill to all, there will be no friction or excess tension and you will have no bodily disturbances. A young woman was resisting life by complaining. I am leading a humdrumming existence. I am lonesome, frustrated, and I have no friends. I lead a drab, weary existence. She learned that her thought is creative and that by thinking along these lines, she was compounding her misery because whatever we give attention to, the subconscious magnifies. After learning something of the laws of life, she reversed her mental attitude and began to affirm frequently and habitually, I am happy, joyous, and free. I am loving, kind, harmonious, and peaceful. I sing the song of praise and joy in the Lord, which is my strength. For the Lord is that lordly power within me, my mind, my spirit, which created me, the invisible part of me. She realized that whatever she attaches to I am, she becomes, which is an age-old Hindu truth. Whatever you attach to I am, you become. You can say, I'm poor, I'm deaf, I'm no good, I'm a flop, I'm a failure. You'll become all these things. On the other hand, you can say, I'm illumined, I'm inspired, I'm successful, I'm happy, joyous, and free. Feel it, believe it. She made a habit of affirming the above wonderful truths. Her whole life was changed from her former so-called drab existence to fullness of life, including marriage to a young dentist, a new home, plus a new perspective and a new insight into the wonders of that infinite life principle within her. Let us have a meditation now. Know that the light dispels darkness, so does the love of the good overcome all evil. Love and hate cannot dwell together. Love casts out fear. Turn the light of the infinite upon all fear or anxious thoughts in your mind, and they flee away. 
the dawn, the light of truth appeared, and the shadows, fear and doubt, flee away. No divine love watches over you, guides you, makes clear the path for you. Realize you're expanding into the divine. Divine love surrounds you, unfolds you, and enwraps you. Divine love goes before you today and every day, making straight, joyous, and glorious your way. There is a miraculous healing power within you, which made you. This infinite healing presence is flowing through you now, vitalizing, energizing, cleansing, purifying your whole being, so that your whole body dances to the rhythm of the eternal God.